Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Painting Guys. Today we are going to paint fast. Speaking of fast, let's get started right ahead. This is how most of your projects will probably start, by priming. And here is the first opportunity where you can save time. Instead of doing your shadows and highlights with a brush, you can do this with rattle cans, because it is much faster. After you're done with your one color code, you want to achieve two things. Contrast of color and contrast of value. Contrast of color is pretty self-explanatory. Add different colors to your miniatures to have them a bit more natural and diverse looking. Like with this red. Skin is never one flat color. Now, let's take a look at contrast of value. Contrast of value is the contrast between the brightest parts of your models opposing to the darkest parts. Most of the time you want the upper parts of your models to be the brighter parts. This can be achieved by spraying at them in a top to bottom angle. Never use white for this, as it will completely ruin the saturations of your models. A bright color like yellow is much better for this. I used a fine cap for this to add texture at the same time. But if you are a beginner, do not do this. By doing this, you can completely ruin the look of your models. This is the stage where you turn your models from completely awful to pretty awesome. You do this by dusting them with the original color. Do it only really, really light. And you are done with the skin. Let's move on with the details. As a first thing, I keep the minis on the wooden stick, so I don't lose time on picking up and putting down painting handles. And I recommend that you try it out too, together with the second thing, which is obviously taking a big brush. Those two things won't automatically speed up your painting process by themselves, but besides giving you the opportunity to paint faster, they do two things. They force you to paint active and to think about what you're doing. And this can really speed up your painting process, because if you get too comfortable, you also get slower. It's okay to get comfortable, but you're slower. And yes, just like me, you will make more mistakes in the beginning. But once you adapted yourself and embraced the big brush, you will move along way faster than you did before. Even I, the master of a big brush, will need to step down a bit for the little details. I even need to paint the details brown that were too small for me to paint with a big brush. But luckily I can combine it with doing a second layer on the brown details. To save time, I'm only covering the most obvious parts though. I will be using oil washes, but before you click away, let me explain. As much as I like oil washes, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. If you want to use acrylic washes, go ahead, they're great. But they just don't go off the brush as smoothly as oil brushes do. When using oil washes, do two things. Use your white spirit just like you would use water and keep your oil brushes and acrylic brushes separate. Remember the rattle can red from the beginning? I will be using the second oil wash to embrace and enhance this effect. I put it at all the details where there are wounds and stuff like that. And I come back in later with a big brush 
to just blend them in. With the washes dried, all the brown details still look a bit too flat for my taste. But that's nothing what a quick dry brush can't fix. Yep, this dry brush helps really much. And then it takes only two minutes. And I can't take this into the voiceover because the camera mic is really shit. As you are moving along with painting the bases and dotting the eyes, all of a sudden you notice that you are almost done. And that at a time where you normally still would be at the earlier stages of painting. Happily, you dry brush the bases, paint the base rims and you're done. And see you next time. <laughs>